good evening and welcome to Porch Talk. Uh, I'm Paul Marino. Ed Morandi is snowed in tonight, but we have Roger Urban with us again. Hello, Roger. Hello, Paul. And thank you very much for joining us tonight on National Dentistry Day. It's March the Tooth. March the Tooth. Okay. Oh. Whoa. Mm. That's bad even by my standards. So we are live tonight here at Northern Berkshire Community Television, though I know some people are probably wishing us dead after a joke like that. Uh, and if you have an announcement to make or something of a positive nature you'd like to talk with us about, please give us a call at 664-4408. And before we go any further, I need a drink. That's good to see. <laughs> right. All right, so I do have some announcements to make. Oh boy, I have a stack of announcements and I don't know if I'll get through all of them tonight. Uh, <clears throat> on March 12, uh, and I'm not sure what day that is. I think it's a Monday. Maybe yes, our. Yes, it's a Monday. Thank you, dear. Thank you, mother. <laughs> uh, Monday, March 12, uh, Berkshire County Arc is celebrating March's Brain Injury Awareness Month with a film screening of The Crash Reel. Uh, it's about the famous Olympic snowboarder from Vermont, Kevin Pierce, who sustained a traumatic brain injury from a snowboarding accident. Uh, the screening will take place at Reed Middle School on 950 North Street in Pittsfield on March 12. Doors open at 6 p.m. and the showing starts at 6.30. Uh, film runs for one hour and 48 minutes. Accessible seating is available. Uh, they do ask you to register for this event. Um, and to register, please go to, oh dear God, HTTP colon forward slash, forward slash, bit dot ly, forward slash, bc arc, crash reel. Please don't ask me to repeat all that. At the library this month, uh, toddler story time, well, yeah, toddler time story time, uh, for uh, families with children ages birth to three years old, siblings welcome. Uh, stories are read with lots of songs and gross motor skill activities as well. You have gross motor skills, don't you? On occasion. Thank heaven. I, I've seen some of them. They're pretty <laughs> gross. Yes. Uh, so this is every Tuesday at 10.30 a.m., uh, for information on this, call the Youth Services Department at the library, 662-3133, extension 14. The preschool story time, uh, again at the public library, for children ages 3 to 6 years old, siblings welcome, uh, read uh, and time to share ideas and thoughts as well as a craft every Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. The daycare provider story time. Now, you would think that a daycare provider would be able to read a story for him or herself rather than go to the library and have a story read to them. <sighs> but thank goodness our library likes people like that, even if the rest of us don't. Uh, daycare providers looking for an educational outing for their kiddos. Oh, so <laughs> it's not for the daycare providers. It's for the children they're looking after. <clears throat> yes. Feel free to hit me, I'm asking for it. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, come on. No, I wouldn't do that, Paul. <clears throat> yeah, that's because you're no fun. It's too late in the evening to start brawling. It's only six o'clock. All right, so as I was saying, uh, this is for children ages birth to five years old, siblings welcome. Uh, lots of, uh, one or two stories to read with lots of songs and more gross motor skills. Mondays, March 12, 
and March 26th at 10 a.m. And uh, we'll get away from the library for a bit. There's a lot going on at the library this month. Uh, I want to mention the uh, Northern Berkshire Community Coalition Monthly Forum. Uh, I understand they had something like 75 people uh, at the February one, which was this past Monday. And, ooh, sounds like we have a phone call coming in. Uh, if you have never been to a forum of the Northern Berkshire Community Coalition, you owe it to yourself to go. Uh, it's going to be Friday, March 16th, 10 a.m. to noon, uh, at the First Baptist Church here in North Adams, the Eagle Street door. For information on it, you can call the coalition at 663-7588. And I'll be mentioning that again a little later on. Uh, if you are a parent, and you have a small child that you would like to raise to be a thinking child, uh, the family, uh, family center is having a free eight-week parenting series starting Wednesday, March 21, and going through May 16 from 6 to 7.30 p.m. at the Williamstown Youth Center, 66 School Street in Williamstown. <clears throat> This is for families with children ages three to eight years. Parents will learn the I can problem solve technique. This proven program helps children to think about solutions to problems and encourages positive behavior. Parents will learn ways that they can help their children develop everyday problem solving skills. Parents will receive a workbook with fun weekly activities and ideas to practice at home. Uh, the parenting series are informal and in interactive groups. Couples are welcome. They provide a meal for families and children. On-site child care is available as well as transportation if it's needed. Uh, for information on this or to register, give the family uh, center a call at 664 -4821. And I think that'll do for announcements for now. Let's talk about something else. Paul, I notice you're wearing a badge here. Yes, Tell me about it. I am. And can we get a close-up of this with camera four, please? Uh, no, no, camera four. Reassuring to know she's on the job, isn't it? Okay. Now, you notice that this set uh, the, uh, There we go. That's good. Right there. Notice it says Vote for Susan. This is the Vote for Susan project. It's going on in Adams right now. Uh, Susan B. Anthony, of course, could not vote in her lifetime. Uh, and of course, now that her lifetime has passed, she can't vote now either. <coughs> However, uh, seeing as numbers have been going down for registered voters and people showing up to vote. Uh, Adams is pushing this project to encourage people to register to vote, to encourage them to turn out to vote for local, state, and national elections, and to encourage more interest in participating in uh, local government. Uh, and hopefully, if it's successful, they will be up to a 50% turnout in votes, which is what they used to have, uh, and they would like to achieve that by the year 2020. So if this is of interest to you, whether you're from Adams or North Adams or Williamstown, I don't care wherever you're from, this strikes me as a really good thing to be involved in. So if this is of interest to you, what you want to do is you want to email them at voteforsusan2020 at gmail.com. That will get you on their mailing list. Uh, and whenever they have events coming up, they will let you know. And you can also follow them on Facebook. Uh, you want to search for the Vote for Susan project. And again, that email is vote for Susan, all one word, 2020 at gmail.com. 
Sounds like a great idea. Yes. Uh, this <clears throat> was announced at the uh, Susan B. Anthony birthday celebration. So I, I think it's a terrific idea. Agreed. And uh, it would be great if we could get something like that going here in North Adams as well. It, it's sad that so many people sit back and let others decide how mm -hmm. the city, the town, the, the country is going to be run. Absolutely. Without having a say in it. If you have no say, it's really sad. Yes, it is. Now, before we go any further, you will notice the picture behind us. Um, um, Emily, would you put it in front of us, please? Uh, no, no, the picture in front of us, dear. <sighs> you aren't going to ask me what this picture is, are you? No, no, I'm I not. Know. That's right, you already told. know. <laughs> yeah. So you are exempt <laughs> from trying to answer the question. Darn. Well, what is behind us, <coughs> and will hopefully be in front of us very shortly. Oh, come on, she figured it out. Ah, there, there we go. go. Close enough, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> This is the Flag Stables, which was built uh, off Main Street. Uh, uh, there, was a, there were actually buildings in front of it on Main Street. Uh, and it was built by James Flagg. Uh, if you know um, Brian Flagg, uh, this is one of his ancestors. Uh, it was built as a commercial stables and a carriage repository. Now, here's the question. What is the last business that was in this building? Now, if you're my age and you used to go up Bank Street to go to the YMCA when you were a kid uh, before 1970, you will remember seeing, hopefully remember seeing this building and the sign that was over the door, which was no longer flag stables. So if you would like bragging rights to uh, know, I know the answer to the history quiz, give us a call, 664-4408. It is now about quarter after six, not quite quarter after. Uh, so if, just Major chugging, look. Just chugging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you still have about 45 minutes to call and make a guess on this. Or you can look it up on my website and uh, see, see what it is there. And you can still call in, and I won't know that you cheated unless, unless you tell me. That's not cheating. That's just being intelligent. Yes, I suppose so. Well, you know, when I was in college, uh, the first math course that I took, the gen ed math course, uh, all of the quizzes and tests were open book. Uh, and the teachers uh, feeling, it was George Gluster, actually, who was teaching that. And you didn't know George Gluster, no, did you? Well, I did. <laughs> and his, uh, his thought was, he has to open the book to write up the, qu the quiz or the test. So it doesn't seem fair that he can look at the book and we can't. And besides that, uh, the book doesn't give you the answer, but it tells you how to find the answer. Unlike my website, which can give you the answer. <laughs> oh, dear. Yes, darling. I'm getting too intimate. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, you started it. I know. <laughs> so, do you have anything in particular to talk about? Oh, not really. Uh, I, d I just want to mention that uh, by the end of March, we're going to be starting our summer work, mm -hmm. spring work at the Hillside Cemetery. March is just when we take our tool tools down in the vault and inventory them and get our materials together. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to go up uh, and take a walk around and assess the winter damage. We had a little winter damage. We know of a, at least two stones that were knocked over by wind. Um, wind and whatever, snow. So well, I should we'll think it would be frost heaves. No, not on this place. Hmm? No. 
And the other thing is uh, the following month in April, uh, we'll be starting our regular work. We work every Wednesday and every other Saturday. And we'd love to have some more volunteers. Uh, the more, the merrier. If you can volunteer for a day, come on up. If you can do it on a regular basis, wonderful. Uh, we can use all the help we can get. And, and any age group would be fine. If, if you uh, want to bring a child up and have them help a little bit, that's fine. We can find something for you to do that will be safe for the child and enjoyable, and perhaps you can learn a little bit, too. Well, if I was a parent, <coughs> I, I, I wouldn't want an activity that's safe for my child. I'd want a way to get rid of him. <laughs> well. Like, could we accidentally knock this stone over on him? I wouldn't recommend that, no. Oh, well, we, right. we don't want to see that. We so don't, don't bring your children if you want to get rid of them. Mm -hmm. Bring them if you like them. <laughs> you all right? <laughs> no. no. I knew the answer. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you've known me, you're going to ask a question like that? Well, it was a leading question. <laughs> now, I know it's only been two weeks, but... Uh, what's the word on the, uh, the ATV? Well, we're still kind of uh, waiting on the gentleman who called. He needs to bring the, he wants, or is going to bring the ATV down from Pittsville to North Adams. We can take mm -hmm. a look at it then and try to assess what's wrong with it and then to determine how much um, he's asking for it. I mean, we do have a very limited budget, but. Um, that's where we are with it. We're looking into some other possibilities as well if this doesn't work out. And we're thinking maybe we can get one military surplus. Mm -hmm. um, and in that case, uh, it, would cost, it would cost nothing except getting it here. So there's, there's still some things in the works. But uh, at this point, no, we don't have one. <laughs> and at this point, we don't need it. But next month, we will. Well, if you're going mil military surplus, may maybe you can get an armored personnel carrier. You really load it up with the supplies. I can think of some places I would like to bring that, yes. <clears throat> I won't mention them. And if you're sick and tired of listening to the two of us idiots, or at least this idiot talking, give us a call at 664-4408. I hear nothing. No, but Silence. look in the camera. There are people sitting in front of their televisions watching us. You think? Watching you. Well, thank you. What, what <laughs> happened to your wide-eyed look of shock? You practiced it before the show. I know. Looking at you. There we go. <laughs> I so, can't compete with this. <laughs> <laughs> Very few people can. That's true. That's true. All right. So let's look at uh, a few more of these announcements. Uh, the Puppet Brigade. Uh, the Puppet Brigade, Brigade is going to be at the Williamstown Youth Center Thursday, March 15, 1130 a.m. to 1230 p.m. This is a free drop-in event for any Northern Berkshire families with children ages birth to eight years old. No need to register. If you want information, give them a call, 664-4821. Uh, and the Puppet Brigade are giant interactive puppets. Kind of like me. You may not believe it, but there's someone down on the floor behind me with his hand up. Well, we won't go there. You're back. Yes. <laughs> Tuesday, March 13, at the Williamstown Youth Center, ooey gooey night. <laughs> well, this is a fun, messy art and science activities for young children, for families with children one to eight years old, and it should be a barrel of laughs. Even more fun than I am. 
Go ahead. You can feel free to deny it. Nothing to say. <laughs> it's because you're no fun. Ooey gooey, Nico. I like that. Yeah. And I expect the kids do, too. Uh, I remember uh, in the summer, they also have um, mud activities where kids can go and play in the mud. How unusual. Yeah. My gosh, things that we used to do for free, huh? Well, the thing is, you know, it, th these are programs to get children out to play with other children, which doesn't happen the way it happened with us anymore. True. Yeah, you, know, you and I were free-range kids. We went out in the morning, uh, played until lunchtime, came home, had lunch, went back out again, unless we were really little and were made to take a nap first. That's true. Yeah, it's... and that, that just doesn't happen anymore, which is one terrific thing about the Family Center and its uh, host agency, Child Care, the Berkshires. Uh, they do work very hard at providing activities for families and children, such as Polar Bear, Polar Bear, Story Walk and Story Time, March 12 through March 30 at the David and Joyce Milne Library, a special Polar Bear Story Time, Tuesday, March 27 at 10.30 a.m. Follow the pages and read the book Polar Bear, Polar Bear around the library. When you have finished your story walk, please stop in the children's section to fill out a chance to win a raffle basket. And again, oh, oh, finally, okay, here's a couple that are happening in North Adams. Relax for yourself and your family. A parent workshop about taking care of yourself. Tuesday, March 6, 4.30 to 5.30 p.m. at the Family Center, 210 State Street in North Adams. We know it's not easy to say, but not always easy to do. This workshop will give you simple, practical ideas to use in everyday life. Call 664-4821 to register. Space is limited, so register early. Free childcare and dinner for parents and children. Transportation available if needed. And this is another terrific thing about uh, the Family Center. A lot of their things, uh, a lot of their events, they will come and get you if you don't have a car. Nice. You know, and they, they provide <coughs> dinner uh, for, for people who show up. And of course, they take care of your children on site so you don't have to hire a babysitter. You know, talk, talking about <clears throat> getting children active, uh, I just wanted to pass on a little anecdote. We uh, went to one of the local restaurants a, a few weeks back, and as we were eating, we watched this family come in father, mother, son, and daughter. And they sat at a, at a table, obviously, and were sitting across from one another. Through their entire meal, not one word was spoken because they were too busy on their iPhones. Mm -hmm. It absolutely blows my mind that, that people don't know how to communicate anymore, even within the family. They, they don't talk. It's this sort of thing, you know. It, it, it's crazy. Uh, kids that like sports, their parents require that, many do anyway, that they be organized. The sports has yeah. to be, we used to pick up baseball games and go down to the, the local open field and, and play baseball, or, uh, you know, tag or whatever we could. Now it has to be organized. It, oh, it, yeah. It's ridiculous. Uh, when I was a kid, my father firmly disapproved of uh, Little League because <coughs> only the good players play. Uh, when he was a kid, they played, I think it was one a peck one or one a peg one. Uh, somebody pitched, somebody batted, whoever caught the ball got to be at bat. And everybody got to play whether you were any good or not. It's, um, it, it, it's just amazing. You see uh, 
things that, such as the skate park. Mm -hmm. and, and there were some naysayers. Oh, they'll never be used. Ever. I saw kids out there yesterday mm -hmm. skating on the skate park in the cold. I said, oh, my goodness gracious. But, you know, nobody really realized, I don't think, is how well that would come across. And it, I think it was well worth the grant money that was spent mm -hmm. on it. Absolutely. But again, it's not organized. Kids go down and they have fun. And they learn to interact with one another, which is really important when you get to be a little older. Mm -hmm. There's time enough to be organized. Well, you know, that reminds me um, of a game that we used to play at Johnson School when I was a kid. And the thing is, kids were playing it when I got there. Kids were playing it when I left. And there was nothing organized about it. Uh, for reasons entirely unknown to me, it was called Black Tom. It was, pay it was played on the basketball court. Now consider this table to be the basketball court. So there's a basket here, there's a basket there. Everyone lines up at one end behind the, the line of the basket. Someone in the middle is it. And everybody starts running from one end of the court to the other and back again. And they keep doing that. Whoever gets tagged is also it. The last person to get tagged is it for the new game. Unless some gullible soul can be persuaded to call new game in the middle of the ongoing game, and then he's it for the new game. And of course, who cares anyway, because really? yeah, everybody gets tagged eventually. It's, uh, I, I, there was a cartoon in last week's paper, uh, a cartoon strip called Pickles, which I, I really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. So does uh, Mary Louise. Uh, he, uh, it's a grandfather, and he was taking his grandson out, and he said, why don't we go to the playground? And I'll uh, let you go on the swings. And he said, well, we can't. They don't have swings anymore. Too dangerous. He said, well, then we'll go on a teeter-totter. And he said, you haven't been to a park lately, have you? <laughs> <laughs> and it's true, you know. <clears throat> Things that we used to do are deemed extremely dangerous. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's the way time goes. Yeah. And it's a shame, really, because teeter-tottering is such a simple game. Till one leaps off. Yeah. <laughs> so they went, the last cartoon of it was they, they went to the, uh, the children's park playground, and there was a half a tire buried. That was mm -hmm. it. And then it shows a little boy standing on top of a slide. And he says, well, at least we have a slide. And then it, the picture backs away from it. The slide is about two foot tall. <laughs> so I thought it was hilarious. You ever read that cartoon strip? I don't, I, I'd advise you to read it. It is, it is good. It's interesting. Yeah. One of the more interesting things in the Eagle. And you remember the rafts they used to have at the fish pond? Mm hmm. One low one and one with a tower on it. And the brave ones got up and dove off the tower. I never was one of those. Or jumped off the tower. Oh. I jumped off the tower a few times. Never thought I would jump off the tower. And then when I went into service, we had to take uh, a course in survival and learning how to jump off a, a, a tower at this time was 40 feet tall. Uh -huh. And uh, we learned real quick, because there was a guy behind you with a long stick with mm -hmm. this thing on the end like a... Like a bayonet. A, <laughs> no, it was more like a boxing glove. And if you didn't go off the tower the right way, he would put you off the tower. So, uh, what learned. was there to land on? Water. Oh. oh, yeah, it was a big, deep pool. Um, and then you had to swim underwater from one end of the pool to the other without breaking the surface, or you had to do it again. And you do it three times. If you didn't do it, if you couldn't get it done in three times, then you were in trouble. It was pretty strict training. But that's beside the point. Yeah, but it's, it's uh, a, a good thing to know. Yeah, I, I hope you're writing down your memories of your life. I've thought about it, but I haven't done it yet. Yeah, you, you ought to give it some serious consideration. 
I am right now in the process of working on an oral history of my family. Not just my life, but things I remember my parents telling me. Mm -hmm. uh, so things about my ancestors. And my mother's father was smart. He wrote an autobiography. So I have a written record from him. Wow. And, uh, oh, what was it? Now, Drat, I was thinking of something in particular, and now I've driven it out of my head. Thanks a lot. A few, <gasps> a few weeks back, or actually now a few months back, I got a call in the evening, and this fellow says, is this Roger Irvin? I said, yes, it is. And he says, well, I'm your cousin. And I said, oh, which one? And he said, Bert. And I said, Bert, I'm sorry, but I don't know of any cousin that I have named Bert. He said, well, actually, your, great, your grandfather and my grandfather were brothers, so we are related. Mm -hmm. And now he moved to Adams, <clears throat> and he's a historian, so we are going to get together and, and uh, go through the family history and mm -hmm. learn a little bit more about that side of the family. Uh, yeah, I have a similar connection with the Moroccos. Um, of course, th th they had uh, something like 12 children, mm -hmm. and so it's a huge family, um, but I only know two of them personally. Uh, one is John, and the other is, um, oh great, she's going to hate me for this, I can't <laughs> remember her name. <laughs> but uh, I remember the first time that I saw her, that I actually noticed her. I was with my father, and we were driving down Houghton Street with a red-headed girl walking up the street, and he said, she's your cousin. He didn't pull over and introduce us. <laughs> Just, that's your, she's your cousin. <laughs> it's, it, you know, when you start getting into these things, you find some, some very interesting uh, items. For example, his last name and my last name were not spelled the same, mm -hmm. even though we're related even though our grandfathers were brothers. And the upshot of it was, I guess when they uh, came to the United States from Canada uh, and registered, or, or mm -hmm. were either were born here and then registered, um, they were the only place to register the little town that they were born in, which was uh, Sable Forks, New York, was the church. And whoever was working at the church that mm -hmm. day was a person who registered the incomers, so the names are spelled differently. And I always thought that was interesting because when my granddad died on that side, and he's buried in Adams, I was too young to go to the funeral, and later on, I found this the grave site, and the name was not the same as mine. And I said, isn't that interesting, you know? And I asked my dad, and he said, well, there are two spellings. Fascinating yeah. things. Well, you know, my name is spelled Marino, M-A-R-I-N-O. Yeah, it's spelled Marino. <sighs> there, I'm better now. Okay. <laughs> uh, but my uncle Jimmy used to use the Spanish spelling, M-O-R-E-N-O. Marino. Yeah. Yeah, the only reason I can think of is he moved out uh, of the house early. Of course, Italian boys normally stayed home until they were in their 30s. <laughs> and uh, he moved out while his mother was still alive uh, because he couldn't get along with uh, his father. And uh, I'm wondering if he changed the spelling then so he would not be associated with him. It's possible, sure. There are just so many so many things that when you get to be a certain age you start looking into and you realize you didn't know it all mm -hmm. you didn't know what you thought you know that's it's it's fascinating um. yeah and it's, it's, the really annoying thing is things my father ought to have known but didn't like he knew that when his father courted his wife, he would get off from work, say, on 
Friday, take an axe and walk through the woods. The axe was to protect himself from wolves. Walk through the woods to her village, spend the weekend with her, and then walk home again through the woods with the carrying axe. the axe. <laughs> He couldn't, but my father could not tell me the name of either village. Uh, my father actually lived in Italy for a while. He was born in North Adams, but his mother had chronic asthma. And uh, she eventually went back to Italy for the sake of her health. Hmm. And she took my father and his brother James with her. And I'm guessing they went to the village that she lived in before she was married. And I've heard of an aunt who had a store and kept a pot of spaghetti sauce simmering outside the door of the shop. And every day she would take whatever leftover scraps she had and add them to the sauce. So it was constantly evolving. I have no idea where that was. So if I was to go to Italy today to try to find my family, you know, uh, the name Marino is all over Italy. And Catanzaro, yeah, there's a city Catanzaro, but the rest of it is, well, like the size of Berkshire County or bigger. It's... I am looking for the children of Raffaele Marino. Yeah, yeah, yeah good luck. Yeah, right. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, family genealogies are, are fascinating. I, I haven't begun to do ours yet on my father's side, but I fully intend to do it uh, before too long and share it with my kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but start writing down everything you know as well. I remember the thing I was, the point I was getting at. Uh, it's up to 40 pages now. And I keep remembering little things that ought to go into it. That they're just little things, but I think they're important to remember, uh, which is how it got up to 40 pages. It started being 35, and I kept remembering things and adding them in. And <laughs> I hope you're being honest, though. Yes. Adding the honest things in. Oh, yes. Good and the bad? Good and the bad. Oh, Paul, it was never anything bad. Supposedly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, it's a cold winter's night out there. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, and it's about time we had another one. Um, the thing that I worry about uh, in the winter is getting enough snow because, of course, our reservoirs depend on having enough snow in the winter, or at least rain in the spring. It's one thing to not have any snow in the winter as long as you have a lot of heavy rain in the spring because that fills the reservoirs. But other than that, you know, if, if we don't get the precipitation, we're going to be gasping for breath in the, spring, in the summer. Right. So, uh, hey, we have 20 minutes to go, just under 20 minutes to go. So if you have something to talk about, give us a call here at 664-4408. And you thought I couldn't do that without looking at the monitor, didn't you? Ha ha. You fool them. Yeah. If anybody is watching this show, please call us. Yes, please. please. <laughs> Let us know you're alive out there. <laughs> One of my friends said he was going to call, but he hasn't called yet. I have to write him off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ed said he'd be watching. I don't hear any calls no. from him. However, Berkshire Nursing Families is having Team Trivia Night on March 3rd, which is tomorrow as we record this. A, a night of great friends, good food, lots of laughs, and fierce trivia competition for the coveted booby prize. Uh, this okay. takes place at the Williams Inn, uh, 1090 Main Street in Williamstown. Doors open at 5.30, buffet dinner at 6, and the game starts sharply at 7. $100 per player includes dinner. So obviously that's a fundraiser. 
uh, Northern Berkshire Adult Basic, uh, Adult Basic Education Program is beginning their spring program enrollment. Free classes, preparation for the new high school equivalency exam, uh, English for speakers of other languages and basic skills classes, career pathways, college and career readiness, <coughs> online GED preparation in and out of the classroom. Enrollment continues throughout the year. Uh, if you want information on this, you may give them a call at 662-5314. Would you repeat that, please? Yes. No, I said repeat that. That. Thank you. 662-5314 or 662-5310. And would you repeat that, please? No. Thank you. No. 662-5310. If, uh, if I may. Of course. Um, one of the things that we've been doing is listing all the veterans that are buried up at Hillside. And uh, I've got their, their names, and some of them I'll be able to find out a little bit more about their military history, what regiments they were in, or you know, what battles, or what, that sort of thing. But I've also noticed that there are a lot of names that sounded so familiar from people who are here today. Mm -hmm. So if anybody thinks that they have a veteran who was in the Civil War, an ancestor, uh, drop me a line, let me know, and I'll try to get some history on that person for you. Uh, we have a number of them right now. Uh, we're, we're doing um, sort of what we did with, with uh, John Atwood. Mm -hmm. you know, just a few lines to let you know what, at least what unit the guy was in. Um, and I'm especially interested in those people who have relatives who may have fought in the Revolution. Mm -hmm. We have five soldiers of the Revolution buried in North Adams. Um, I'm, I'm having a crazy idea sure. as you say this. Sometimes the best kind. Um, once you got all the names done, what do you think of putting up a memorial board, or maybe two of them, on either side of the, uh, the receiving vault? Now, as you know, you have the big stone walls there. Um, it's a good idea. And it's, it's perhaps, idea. Um, to get really crazy, uh, you could have where to find these people. <laughs> that would be really tough. Mm -hmm. uh, they're scattered all over, and there's a lot of them. There's a oh, lot yes. Of them. A lot of veterans. We have veterans up there from... Actually, before the Revolutionary War, the uh, King Philip's War, as you know, mm -hmm. the Revolutionary War, War of 1812, Civil War, Spanish-American War, World Wars I and II. We couldn't get so along were, with anybody. There were a ton of them, you know, there were a ton of names. But what I'd like to do is somehow find a, a way or a place to publish these names so people can actually see them and mm -hmm. see if, you know, the name is the same as theirs and maybe they'd want to do some some investigating about that. It's just something that strikes me. Now that I can make available. As far as putting them up on a board, it'd be kind of expensive. Mm -hmm. You know, you'd have to get something that's durable, which means metal. And it, uh, that plaque, for example, that, uh, that they use for uh, the veterans, mm -hmm. those things cost about $1,400 a piece. Yeah, but again, take a look at McCann. Good idea. Now, McCann could make that uh, either paint it or do it with raised letters. Now, last year I talked about adding on to the veterans circle down here uh, because we start at World War I and list all mm -hmm. the veterans. But our history goes back far before that. It might be interesting to see if we can get that accomplished. Perhaps not on the same scope, maybe mm -hmm. just a plaque on a rock or something you know, near the borders of that thing. It's, it's uh, I, I think we're missing out on a lot of people who served the city well in the past. I hate to interrupt, but Paul, could you come in the control room for just a sec? Of course. Uh-oh, I'm on my own? I'm afraid so. 
What do you want me to read here? Any of the announcements. Mm. Oh, here's something that might be interesting. A family center book bags to go. Ten books to a bag. Ten bags equals 100 books. Books for infants, preschoolers, school-aged children uh, are available. Stop by the family center and pick up a bag to go, and you have ten story books to read, uh, ready to read to, to your children, or they can read them themselves, which would be even better. And the bags can be borrowed for three weeks. So that's a great idea. Uh, see if you can make, uh, make, make that happen. There are so many resources available for, for uh, people in this city that we probably don't take full advantage of and should. And part of that is where do you find the information as to where these things are and what they are? Well, this is one of the places you can do it. And there's got to be some other outlets that we can find to uh, publicize this. Um, because we have great opportunity to expand uh, people's interests and things that are happening within, within our city. Uh, the city, yes, it is shrinking in size, but it's not shrinking in the scope of what people are doing. Matter of fact, I think people are doing a lot more of this sort of thing than they ever used to. Uh, many, many things are left up, uh, were left up to the family in age, ages ago, and now it's public, uh, public work that can be done. So try to, uh, try to make yourself aware of what's happening in the city that, that uh, might be available to you and to your family. Uh, Paul has got, still got a ton of these things to read. I don't know if he's gonna be able to get them all done in the 13 or 14 minutes we have left, 11 minutes and 23 seconds to go. So, but he's back. And welcome, Paul. Thank you. You're welcome. Again. You're really gonna wanna hit me this time. <laughs> <laughs> I found out why we haven't been getting any calls. Uh, I forgot to update the schedule, so uh, we were actually playing the last show that we did until just a few seconds ago. Wonderful. But be of good cheer, this one will go on next week. <laughs> oh. Here, go ahead. Anybody hit me. want to vomit? No. Sure hit me. Here. here, here. No, no <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't strike folks. Oh, no, you really it. are no uh, fun. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, goodness gracious. Well, thank you for not calling. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I think I have a hit coming. Now, let's see here. Ow! You were asking for it. <laughs> thank you, Emily. That, that's one thing about her. She, she's just like an abacus. You could really count on her. <sighs> All right. Okay. What's next? I did the book bag thing. You did the book bag yep. thing. How about free diapers? <laughs> uh, for babies. Oh, okay. Families can come hey, to the family. Know. Families can come to the Family Center to pick up a pack of 10 diapers up to twice per month. It's a collaboration with the Berkshire Diaper Project. Children's Clothing Exchange, free gently used children's clothing and coats in sizes birth to 10 and free children's books. Again, drop in at the Family Center at 210 State Street in North Adams, the lower level offices Playroom and Clothing Exchange, open weekdays 8.30 to 4.30. And I want to, again, since no one heard me the first time, <laughs> uh, the Northern Berkshire Community Coalition is having its March Forum on Friday, March 16. Oh, that's the day of our next show. Maybe. Yeah, 10 a.m. to noon. <laughs> Uh, at the First Baptist Church here in North Adams, the Eagle Street door. If you have never been to a coalition forum, you owe it to yourself to attend. This is when the community really gets together. Uh, and 
Well, uh, as I said earlier, and no one heard me, uh, because of some idiot that works here, uh, I won't mention any names, <laughs> uh, but uh, at the, the February one, which was this past Monday, they had 75 people there. Wow. Uh, and that was the youth-led forum. I, I wish I could have been there because I could really contribute to, to that discussion. So again, Northern Berkshire Community Coalition is having its monthly forum on Friday, March 16, 10 a.m. to noon at the First Baptist Church here in North Adams, the Eagle Street door. For information, go to uh, call 663-7588. And there is no need to register for this. Just show up. Everyone is welcome. And uh, Emily, could we have the picture in front of us again, please? Not the credits, the photo. Thank you. Now, again, uh, this is Flag Stables, which was built off of Main Street. Uh, and uh, uh, it was built as a stable and carriage repository. Uh, but the history question this week is, what is the last business that was in that building. You still have about five minutes left to give us a call, 664-4408. Oh, there we are. Ah. Well, you know, I'm tempted to go in there uh, and slug her. This, this has been an experience. <laughs> Welcome to Public Access yes. Television. I knew I was filling in, but... <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right, so we still, we still have about six minutes to go. What do you want to talk about? Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> I, I already did a little bit of a spiel while you were gone, but uh, what do I want to talk about? Oh, why don't we talk about the Lego group? You know, I was just going to say that. Yes, well, I know you love to go up there and play with the Legos. I do. Uh, this is at the North Adams Public Library in partnership with the Family Center. Uh, it's hosting a free Lego, Lego group on Thursday, March 8 and March 22nd. It's a drop-in group for families of children ages 4 to 12. Siblings are welcome. There you go. Uh, Legos are provided for a fun hour of free play, opportunities for cooperative building with peers, and a Lego challenge option. Uh, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. in the third floor community room of the North Adams Public Library. For information, give the Youth Services Department a call at 662-3133, extension 14. And the North Adams Public School Art Show and Reception, in partnership with the North Adams Public Schools, uh, select artwork from students from Brayton, Colgrove, and Greylock Elementary Schools will it be on display from mid-March through mid-April throughout the Youth Services Department of the North Adams Public Library. The community is invited to come to view the displayed work during library's hours and the art show reception will be held sometime in April, hopefully to be announced before it actually happens. And again, the number to call for information is 662-3133, extension 14. And this would be something that I think would be worthwhile for everyone in the community to show up for. And when you're visiting the library, please remember no sliding up the banister allowed. <laughs> I'm going to mention one other thing that, that's in the works. I don't know if it's going to take place or not. I don't know if we can make it happen. But we're looking into doing reads across America for our veterans here in mm -hmm. uh, North Adams. Now, this was brought to my attention. We tried to do it two years ago, but I couldn't get much interest in it. Uh, but a couple of ladies uh, from Stanford, Vermont, gave me a call, and they want to get together and do this. We've already had a couple of meetings um, to try to make things happen. 
I broached this with the mayor. He's very much interested in it. And in case you don't know what it is, it's an organization. We buy the wreaths from them, and they uh, create them and bring them down here. And it's, we place a wreath on the grave of each veteran in all of our cemeteries. And in case you're not aware of it, the city of North Adams has three municipal cemeteries now, not just one. We have Hillside, we have Southview, Southview and, and we also have Blackington. So we have a slew of veterans. Of yeah, pump. plus the other possible ones in other cemeteries. Absolutely. St. Joseph's, for example, we, we do put the flags up at St. Joseph's Cemetery. Mm -hmm. And there are some veterans buried there, and they will be included in this should we be able to get this off the ground. So in a few weeks or a few months, we'll be looking for a list of volunteers to help us uh, put this thing together. So if you're interested, uh, give me a call, drop me a line, or wait till we put out and, some more information. And uh, how can people get in touch with you? Well, I'm in the phone book. You That's are. the best way. You don't look like you don't look like you'd fit. And, uh, I'm, you have my address there. It's uh, 677 Ashland Street, apartment one. And, you know, give me, give me, drop me a line or give me a call. It's, it's even better. Um, if you're interested in doing this thing, it'd be a great thing for our veterans and also a great thing for the city of North Adams because they usually publicize this nationwide. Mm -hmm. so it'd be nice to see. So that's in the works. We're just on the preliminary steps for it. So it's time to give the answer for the history quiz. All right. We have uh, about a minute and a half left to go. Now, this building, as I said earlier, is the Flag Stable, which was uh, built off of Main Street. Uh, it was accessible from Bank Street at some point, uh, and that's when I remember seeing it, when it was the home of what? Come on, I told you this. No, you didn't. Before the show. <laughs> Bang, zoom. This was the home of the Isbell Electric Company. It's the first I've heard of this. You <laughs> told me before. Ah, yeah, see? Yeah, Mine is I a terrible thing too. to waste. No, you didn't. <laughs> no, you didn't. It's a terrible thing to waste. Thank you, Do Paul. I have a mind in here? Look, here, look, look in my finger. How many, how many fingers am I holding up? Six. <laughs> <laughs> Hi there. All right, so we are down to about 40 seconds. Thank God. So th <laughs> thank you for joining us here tonight on National Dentistry Day, March the Tooth. And thank you very much for coming along, uh, Roger. And uh, well, we still have to talk for about 20 seconds. Oh, God. <clears throat> uh -huh. Stars like shining right above you. Yes, that's right. We have Phil here. Thanks for coming, Phil. Yes, I know I am. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching, and we will see you on the 16th.